were wiped away for Confucius. After Yan Hui's death, Confucius sank into deep depression. In his younger days, he had scorned those who retreated from the world to find salvation in heaven. In his old age, he was resigned to the limits of human power. Now I know that heaven has a will of its own. In 479 BC, at the age of 73, the greatest thinker in Chinese history died. His last words were a bitter plea. Will no ruler come forward and take me as his master? Confucius died perceiving himself to be a failure. And so he died believing himself to, to have not really had much influence on China, which is paradoxical because Confucianism has become the dominant mode of thought and the dominant philosophy of China and uh, the surrounding regions for so many centuries. Like many great thinkers, Confucius wrote down little of his philosophy but his teachings did not die with him. They lived on in the hearts of the disciples he had inspired. Twenty-five hundred years after his death, Confucius influences more people than he had ever dreamed possible. In today's booming Asia, his teachings have brought unparalleled prosperity to millions who believe, as he did, in hard work, education, and the capacity of every human being to succeed. And to this day, the spirit of Confucius still inspires courageous reformers who fight for an end to bloodshed and tyranny in China. After the Tiananmen tragedy, many Chinese intellectuals began to realize the Confucian tradition turned out to be a rich resource for their own intellectual self-identification, for their own uh, spirit of protest, even as possible resources for them to understand great Western values, such as human rights, liberty, equality, due process of law, and so forth. I think his legacy is the importance of the human being as a human being. That the human being is important because the human being can improve himself or herself. We can make ourselves. We can create ourselves, our future. When I was 15, I set my heart on learning. At 40, I knew exactly where I was going. At 60, I could bow to immovable truth. At 70, I could follow my heart's desire and never transgress what is right. <laughs> 